the launch is actually only the start of the the, the important activities of MetOpsy. You have a 16-hour launch countdown performed by Ariana Spass, in which Umitsat participates. Um, it's literally in a control room with a, a go-no-go no go type uh, of arrangement. Uh, the spacecraft is launched, and then about an hour and a bit later, it's delivered into its final orbit by the Fregat upper stage and released. That will actually happen as the spacecraft comes south um, just to the west of Australia. And it's visible from uh, a number of stations uh, provided by both the launch vehicle, launch service provider, and also the LEOP service provider. There's a number of ground stations in uh, Australia, in Kerguelen, which is in the South Indian Ocean, uh, Troll in Antarctica, Santiago, Chile, Kourou in French Guiana, right where the rocket originated from, and also Svalbard, although a, a different ground station from ours, where the European Space Operations Centre are able to monitor the operations of the satellite and its autonomous deployment of these activities. They then have a three-day period where they deploy uh, some of the more uh, some of the uh, the doors and the open opening of orifices and things like that uh, using pyrotechnic devices, and they prepare the spacecraft for delivery to UMITSAT which happens 72 hours after launch. The LEOP um, comprises the um, operations of the satellite that happen after the satellite separates from the rocket in space um, until the satellite has reached an operational orbit, an agreed orbit, actually, which is a more uh, correct term, uh, with the battery charging, the solar array deployed, the instruments antenna deployed, and uh, the first orbit determination uh, done and the maneuver done. In that time, there are a number of critical activities, especially at the very beginning, where the spacecraft is released from the, the rocket, and it has to be able to look after itself. So it has to deploy the solar array and start providing power for itself. It, if it doesn't do that quite quickly, then the spacecraft will, will, uh, will not survive. One of the most exciting things, uh, personally, I think, of, of the LEO, it is uh, mm, the very first time the team has a chance to work with the satellite in its uh, meant environment, which is space. It is the very first time. The LEO for METOPC lasts only three days but it takes years to prepare. And uh, the satellite is left uh, at an altitude of uh, roughly 800 uh, kilometers um, in a polar orbit, which is gonna become a sun-synchronous orbit. And this is important because this orbit facilitates uh, the measurements. METOP A has now drifted slightly because it's getting quite old. We're not using, don't have the availability of the fuel, but we want to make sure we have full control over the orbit. So that's drifted around a bit like that. So actually we're doing a bit more like that. METOP C will be inserted into the gap between the two of them. It'll actually be put into an orbit about 16 kilometers lower. So they're operating at about 817 kilometers. METOP C will be introduced at about 801, 802 kilometers, which means that relatively speaking, it'll drift around the orbit. The lower you are, the faster you go around the orbit. Uh, it means that we'll then have uh, a, about 15 days uh, where we have the ability to decide where we push METOPSI up into the right position. So it drifts a little bit. Um, then, uh, then we have this constellation in orbit where the three spacecraft are approximately equally spaced. We call this the tri-star configuration, but like a Mercedes star. Um, once that's there, then we start controlling the orbit fully again and the spacecraft stays in a fixed location. We're going to commission the spacecraft in that position and then we will decide later whether we stay like that or whether we move into a different uh, configuration in orbit. I think more likely we'll stay like that. The first phase of the commissioning, which is called the SIOV, uh, the Spacecraft In Orbit Verification, it takes about six weeks uh, and it involves switching on all the instruments, checking them, checking that they're basically working, for the instruments with infrared detectors, we need to start performing what's called a decontamination, where the infrared detectors are heated up. This can last up to a week or 10 days, depending on the, instru on the instrument. And then, as I say, the first phase is the performance check uh, on the instrument itself. The second phase is to check that the products which we derive from the instruments are coming out of the system. Uh, and that takes, if the initial phase is about six weeks, the second phase takes about three months. Uh, there are about 11 inst instruments on board. I say about because uh, some of them actually measure things and some of them don't measure things, but they transpond uh, data. So we have tests, specific tests, that need to be performed on all 11 instruments. 
and they need to be switched on, they need to be configured, and then we have performance tests. So we test various modes of the instruments which are not used during normal operations. Uh, and so normally after about a month, after the end of the first phase, a month into the second phase, uh, we have an internal review, uh, and then we decide whether the data is uh, ready, if you like, to be sent out to the early users. And this is extremely important. The users are extremely interested in that and in, uh, uh, and in finding out what, what, how the satellite performs. Thank you.